Hey guys, Mike in the Woods here. One of the four main pillars of survival is staying hydrated. Whether you're in freezing cold winter temperatures or out under the blazing sun of the desert, having drinkable water is equally as important. Now, most of the time there's a water source around, but what if you're overlanding or car camping or even just at like a off-grid cabin or something and your water supply runs out or gets compromised somehow and there's no water sources nearby? Well, if you at least have power, all hope is not lost. It's not a very efficient solution, but it is an option using a dehumidifier to produce clean drinking water out of thin air. So subscribe if you haven't already and let's explore the idea. So let's state the obvious, this isn't for any situations where you don't have access to power or don't have the ability to haul one or more of these things around. In those situations though, you're generally more mobile, so you're better off pumping it to an accessible water source anyways. But in situations like overlanding, where your vehicle breaks down or your water supply gets compromised, this could be a potential backup, especially if you have a good solar array to run them or like me, you plan on going the electric truck route for an overlanding vehicle. Or in situations like off-grid cabins, drive-up campsites, or even right at home in case the city's water supply gets horribly contaminated. I'm looking at you, Flint, Michigan. All are potential use cases. So how does a dehumidifier collect water from thin air anyways? Essentially, ambient air gets pulled through the unit and rapidly cooled down to the point that the moisture in the air condenses into water droplets, exactly how rain forms, which are then allowed to drip into the collection reservoir. On small desktop units like what I have, they use what's called a Peltier module, which you might actually recognize from my video on thermoelectric generators. It cools down a heatsink for the water to condense onto as it passes through. On larger, more traditional units, like what you'd find in a basement, they use a refrigeration style evaporator coil, exactly like what you would find in a fridge or even an air conditioner. There are a type that don't use any active cooling at all and just rely on desiccant. Ignore these ones as you can't really get out the water once it absorbs it. In theory, what these produce comes out as pure 100% distilled water, but not in practice. As the insides are always continuously damp, there's a good chance that there's some funky stuff growing up in there. So if you're gonna be running these things for consumption purposes, make sure you keep them nice and clean. Additionally, these machines are not technically rated for human consumption of the water. So there's also a chance that it could be leaching some nasty stuff into the water, like heavy metals or something. While it's not a surefire way to guarantee that the water is safe to drink, you can minimize potential health risks by running some test strips through the water to test for chemical or metal contaminants and boil or filter the water before consuming to nuke any bacteria. The average person needs about 2.7 to 3.7 liters of water a day in order to stay fully hydrated, with an absolute bare minimum bottom of one liter a day just to replace what you lose by sweating, peeing, and all the other fun bodily functions you perform. This should give you an idea as to how much water you need to produce in a 24 hour period in order to survive. As an example, the unit I bought for this video can collect up to 450 milliliters a day, but that all depends on conditions, the humidity level, ambient temperature, and so on. If we assume the upper need of 3.7 liters of water a day, that would mean I would need up to eight of these things just to keep up with daily water intake. But on the other hand, that should at least produce the minimum need of one liter of water a day. My unit was 50 bucks, weighs one kilogram, runs at 23 watts, totaling at just 552 watt hours for a 24 hour period. Assuming it runs at at least half efficiency, producing the bare minimum water needed for survival, I should be able to run four of these in parallel, which is 200 bucks, four kilograms, 92 watts of power consumption, or 2.2 kilowatt hours daily use, or less than 1.5% of my future dual motor Cybertruck's battery capacity. So, obviously, this is only a backup of a backup option at best, but like I said, it is an option in situations where it makes sense. Once I get my Cybertruck, I'll trial a few of these out to see how it goes. And this actually gives me an idea to try and make a homemade water farm out of Peltier chips to try and consistently produce four liters of water a day. Maybe one day soon I'll dig into that. If you're new to the channel, I take a look at how fun futuristic technology can intersect with traditional outdoors experiences. So check out my other videos and consider subscribing if that's your thing. I'll leave an Amazon affiliate link to my particular dehumidifier in the description. Thanks for watching guys, I'll catch you next video.